Drop-offs can be scary features in trails. They're ready to send you over the bars, tumbling down that track. So let's take a look at the commitment you need and the do's and don'ts of how to ride drop-offs. You're gonna find drop-offs on pretty much any sort of trail, but here we're on a downhill track where they're much more common. So the first thing to learn about drops is trying to judge the size of them. If they're over a certain size, if you just let that front wheel roll off, you're gonna ground your bike out, and that's where you're gonna get problems stalling and potentially going over the bars. But let's start with drop-offs where you can roll off them. A nice simple way of measuring the size of drops when you're getting into riding drop-offs is actually comparing them to your axle height. If they're much higher than your axle height, then you're probably gonna ground your bike out and that's when you're gonna need to lift the front wheel. But in this case, I've got a nice small drop-off. So this drop-off is nice and small. I can pretty much get away without using any technique on this. It's just a case of always looking beyond it to the trail that's coming after it and relaxing, don't go stiff off that drop-off. Maybe just getting back behind the bike slightly, especially because this one is going downhill. Now, another method I can use is trying to get the bike straight back down to the fore as soon as I can. So the way I do that is actually drop myself down to the bike. So I'm lowering my hips, really getting into that aggressive position on the bike. So as the front wheel drops off, I'm actually gonna use that bend of my arms to push the front wheel down. Then same on the back wheel. I'm gonna wait for the back wheel to roll off the edge and then squat the back wheel down with my feet. Now that's really useful if you're going fast and if you don't do that, you might jump a little bit and land onto an obstacle like a root or a rock. So I'm really just trying to push the bike down to the floor. Right, so now we're moving on to the real deal. A drop that's big enough that you're gonna to need to do something with your front wheel to stop it from just bombing off the edge and that could send you into a big nosedive and you might get away with it off the drop, but it's a section after that can really catch you out. So, in that case, it's all about lifting the front wheel and that's all about a good manual technique. Now, I've done a video on EMBN already about how to manual an e-bike and it's all about getting your weight movement all the way back to your rear wheel and learning where your rear wheel is so you don't stick your bum into it because that can cause you problems as well. So really think about practicing your manuals before you start getting too big on drop-offs. So check out that video first if you haven't done already. Now drop-offs are scary things. We all go through it when we're learning drops. But the one rule is to try and relax. You're really gonna find it easier to move around the bike. If you start panicking, you'll probably go stiff. And also you might look at that drop and really concentrate on it when actually, again, it's probably what's after the drop's gonna catch you out. So try and relax, try and look beyond it. I can still see that drop off here, even though I'm looking way down the trail. I'm trying to use my peripheral vision and use the timing, even though I'm not looking at that drop off. As always, start small and actually try and do it slowly. If you go nice and slow off something that's maybe even the size of a curb, if you can get that good manual and land two wheels at the same time, that's the technique. That's all you're gonna need for going bigger. So start small and start slow. So I think that manual technique is even more important on an e-bike because of the weight of the bike. If you get the timing of the manual wrong or you don't move far enough, that front wheel is actually gonna bomb down because of the weight of the bike really sending it forward. So get that movement nailed. Um, also, just think about that your bike setup, a shorter stem, higher bars, getting your saddle down is gonna really help you get behind the bike. Also a longer travel bike like this one, 180 mile travel, and it's nice and slack. So downhill focus bike is gonna be much more forgiving when riding drop-offs. So once you've got those small and slow drop-offs nailed, well done, that's all the technique you really need for drops. Although it does feel different doing big ones, of course, they can get super scary. But now let's think about adding a little bit more speed. So that is actually gonna make it that much easier as well. That extra momentum means that that front wheel isn't just gonna dip. Uh, again, with e-bikes, they're so stable, that weight does help sometimes, and that speed will also help you out. Just of course, be careful about overshooting the landing or landing in something that's maybe a bit more sketchy. But I would say try and add a bit more speed, maybe just above your comfort level, and that is gonna help out. So with that extra bit of speed, actually that manual technique slightly disappears. And all it feels like to me is I'm just sliding the bike forward. So I still finish in that same position behind the bike, heels down, head up. I just don't do a big pump to get there. Again, timing's really important, just like the manual. You wanna do it as close to the edge as possible. 
again, just using your peripheral vision. So what you can see down here, even though you're looking straight ahead. And also again, you're trying to match the landing. That's the safest way of doing it. So here I'm landing into a downhill gradient. So my front wheel's actually getting there first, but I'm just trying to match the angle of my bike to what I'm landing on. There's a couple of don'ts when it comes to hitting drop-offs on any bike, especially e-bikes. And the first one of those is actually pulling the front wheel when you're trying to do a manual. So this is really common when people are trying to learn it. People often just pull with their arms to pick up the front wheel. And actually your weight stays over the bike. So if you get the timing wrong on that one, the front wheel is really going to drop fast because you haven't moved your weight back at all. Also, the biggest problem with that is actually most people pull and get it a little bit wrong. So they'll pull on one arm slightly more than the other. The bars will go sideways. And if you do that at the top of a drop, you can actually start going one way or the other. And if you're in the air for a long time, that can lead to some big problems. So always thinking about keep your arms straight when your hips are back and that should keep the bars nice and straight. The other one is hitting brakes. When it comes to drop-offs, that's pretty much the worst thing you can do. You need to keep that bike going forward and it's all about committing to that drop. When is a drop-off not a drop-off? Well, it's when you can drop into it. So this drop actually is a really slow run into it. So to hold a manual off this, it's gonna be quite difficult. I'm gonna to have to get that actual technique nailed. I can see loads of marks here where people drag their chainring over. So what I'm gonna do now is almost treat this like a BMX that treats a half pipe. You know, you see them drop their front wheel in, and then you actually pick your back wheel up so that your BB and chainring doesn't catch that. I'm gonna pick the back wheel up and actually nose dive into it. Now that's gonna work here. Like I said, there's hardly any run in, so it's gonna be slow, but also I've got a nice little slope. This isn't always gonna work, because if it's a drop to flat, you're basically nosing into a really heavy landing. So it does depend on the run out as well. So that sort of dropping in technique works really well on slow or technical sections. Again, where I can keep my tires on the floor so I can get braking or cornering. It also works here. So I could drop off this, but it's gonna be big, which means it's gonna be a heavy landing or I've got a nice little bank there. If I nose the bike in, I'll stay in control, I'll stay on the floor. So learning how to ride drop-offs really opens up the sort of trails you can ride, the blacks, the double diamonds, they're all likely to have drop-offs. So get this nailed, you can ride almost anything. And it really is just a case of getting that timing right, getting your manual right, not hitting the brakes, and getting comfortable with that on small drops, building it up. As soon as you get to the bigger drops, it's the same technique, I do try and add a bit more speed, so I rely less on that, so I can just use that momentum to help me out. So, get out there, get practicing, hit that button up there for the how to manual video, that's key to this one. Give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I'm off to practice. <laughs>